and it's a me, Jeremy, with... Hello. Look at the way that started. It's almost like I'm back in, like, 2007. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Although, I don't know. This is what it's like playing Mario. You have to run back into the castle every time. Alright. So, There's no fucking save states. <laughs> no save states in this old school LP. Kicking it old school with Jeremy. Didn't even mean to make that run. Alright, All right, so what? I'm just at a loss for words. <laughs> His charm. His charisma, the Westman, when he's rapping, he is, uh, <laughs> his trap is flapping. Hey, everybody, this is Logie Boy. <laughs> Alright, the only one for Let's Play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so Dude, this one, this one. What's up? Oh, I was gonna say, this, uh, this star I didn't get till I was, like, maybe 22. You know about this star, the wall jump one? Yeah, of course I do, you know. But I remember I, I found the, the place to go, you know, back when I played the game originally a long ass time ago. But I don't think I figured out how to do it till, I, till like last year. I was never good at wall kicks. Uh, wall kicks, I remember. Uh, my dad was trying to, he sucked at them, but that uh, he, he figured out that wall kicks were in the game. And ever since he did, he just thought that that's how you fucking solved every puzzle. Really? Yeah. For the later game, he just thought it was supposed to be so fucking hard, so he ended up use, trying to use wall kicks for everything. And like Did places where it was just about changing the water level or something. So he would go do wall kicks when you could have just fucking changed the water level? Yeah. Damn. Good one! Well, at least the cannon's open. Uh. My problem with the wall kicks is I didn't know you were supposed to like just press B or A, whichever you use to kick, and then just move the stick back and forth. I thought you had to jump and, and then press the, the kick button every time, and I was like, how do people do this? Because I had seen YouTube videos of people just flawlessly pulling off these wall jumps, and I was like, how the fuck are they doing that? Yeah. So, there were a few stars. There were like two stars I just never got. Did you just die again? Oh, no. hey. That was obviously intentional. Uh, I did manage to save it at least. So that was pretty impressive. That that was an accident. <laughs> All right, now I gotta get. <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna miss the tree. They used to really stress me out as a kid, lining that up right yeah. because <laughs> even though like losing is just not a much of a punishment at all. No, it's it's really nothing, but remember when it was like, oh no, I died, I'm going to fall yeah. down. It's like, like, oh, I died in a video game. <laughs> in a game that's very forgiving. Are you ready to Oh, do I remember the what long jump. Ah! Oh, I actually fucked it up. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, it's not as easy because I'm using R2 on the PlayStation controller, and that's uh, it's a deep press to use the technical turn on, just kidding, I don't... Know. I'll bet it is. Oh! Yeah, oh. dude, I would just do that like a million times, or I'd run up and kick it, and then just fall down, and I would see the YouTube videos of people doing it, and she's like, how, how are you supposed to do this? Did you originally get this star as a kid? Uh, I can't remember. I think so, though. You probably No, did. I definitely remember this place, because I thought this place to the side was so mysterious and interesting. Yeah, me too. I, I liked coming over here, but I could never get the star. Yeah, I've tried that too. You can't flip onto it, I don't think. You would have to wall kick against that wall. The way you're supposed to do it is you jump up to that uh, upper part, and then you kick, and then move the stick in the direction uh, of the platform. Uh, who's carried us this far? And then just walks right what off the, the ledge. Fuck? Mario's face distorts when he's in the air for a very long time, and he just looks fucking retarded. <laughs> Try and yeah, get you... a glimpse of it. I, I might even, like, screen cap that. Yeah, uh, screen cap it, because I can't tell through Skype. Oh, fuck. Yeah, right no. there again. It just it gets so scrunched up. Did you ever notice how Link's face would distort in the Ocarina of Time Let's Play? Uh, no, not really. I noticed it all the time. When he was far away, his face was fucking weird looking. 
And then you just walk right off. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Ah. We'll, we'll sip of my drink there. I'll take a sip of my drink while we're at it. Actually, let's go ahead and uh, take a little cut. Are you going to do that? Let's do it. Oh, okay. Surprise recording. Merry Christmas, Wes. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. You know, teacher says every time... Okay, fuck it. Do you remember that show, Rocco's Modern Life? Yeah. Did you ever see the episode where Rocco goes to the DMV? No. Well, um... Apparently, there was some joke where this, uh... The father and his son... Uh, the father picks his son up from the DMV for some reason, because the kid's like five. And he's like, My teacher says every time you pass the, uh... The driving test or something like that, an angel gets its wings. The dad just goes, Your teacher's full of snot. <laughs> I always thought that was really funny, but I don't completely remember what the kids said. It was something along those lines. This is a cool, this is a cool room. Yeah, it's it's cool because, you know, they I guess they had more room. It, it doesn't make any sense. Well, like, I guess, you know, it's a video game, so what do you expect? But they give, you know, this entire stage its own fucking special room with a, such a great theme. And I guess that, dude, they do it with another, uh, other levels. I like how it's... Oh, sorry. No, I was, I was pretty much done. This one's the mushroom, I think, and the other one's the secret. I like how it, uh, it's dark, but there's a light coming off of the aquarium. I like that kind of lighting in real life. Looks like this one's a secret. This was a big secret, too, as a kid. You know, it's like you don't think much of that black square, and then you jump up, oh, I can go in there, and then you're swimming around, and... This was also something I thought was supposed to be inside the castle, with just a room full of water. I, I'm not so sure anymore after that uh, white cap discussion we had. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it kind of makes sense, but then, you know, the way Mario works, you go into something that's a new world. But, you know, it does look very castle-like, so I think you might be right. Like, this yeah, looks very castle, right? Like, this, there's just some crazy room. Maybe it's supposed to be both, like half really mysterious and half uh, sensical, like, uh, yeah. You know. But, but also, I I thought it was the castle because it looked like it, but uh, it it was under Castle Secret Stars, like that was you know listed in the menu. Yeah. So I thought it was the, the castle. So I think this one it might just be. makes me think of uh, the exact same thing we did with the flight cap. Yeah, only it's just, and basically I think this is just to kind of give you a little practice swimming, although it's a secret, so. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, this, this is as tricky as Dark Souls. <laughs> it's tricky as Tricky Cat. And this was like the first water level, uh, not ever of course, but in a 3D platformer, this was like the first water level as, as we know them. Yeah, and uh... <laughs> I don't know how to say without being completely gay, but, you know, this gives me a lot of nostalgia. I mean, me and Jeremy listen to this music and hold each other and cry. Right. We just hold each other, and then, uh, like, while we're embracing each other, we each have an arm uh, on the other side of each other, and we're holding a picture of what we looked like when we were eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we just go, oh, the memories. I mean, but look, the music is, is so fucking good. It's so, you know, wonderful sounding, and then you have all this fog, and then the color scheme, it just looks like, you know, so calm and right. soothing. And, then, and I know, like... Oh, go ahead. To add to it, what are you doing in this calming, soothing, you know, kind of wonderful level? You're just swimming around the entire time. And I like the uh, the mountains around you, like the way it looks like you're like really far off in some other country, you know, just in this weird area surrounded by water and mountains. Yeah, I always thought those spires were really interesting too. Those weird spires yeah. that just come out. Yeah, I, I know the to, spires. Like, around out the, out by them. Yeah, I like to to jump on them with the cannon. And oh my God, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> oh, it's tricky cat. No but... way, Mario. This thing used to fucking scare the shit out of me. Honestly, 
it didn't that thing itself didn't really scare me i thought it looked kind of stupid but what scared me was how big the level suddenly seemed when i started swimming down like the level just seemed so big i felt like i was going so far underground uh and then i saw that and it did freak me out like i didn't think the way it looked was very scary but the fact that there was this weird creature in the sunken ship freaked me out I but thought it's, it was scary just because, well, I mean, I was even younger than you were when I uh, played this. I, I was so, about six years old. Yeah, you're, you're 20, uh, 20 how old? Uh, 29. <laughs> you're 23? 23. Yeah, 23. So that would put me at, like, uh, three. So I, I don't think I played it when I was three years old anyways, but, um... But yeah, that that it just because of how large that thing was, and then it just swimming around in the uh, all in that like big open area, and you if it's when it's off screen, it's especially it was especially terrifying to me. Right? Yeah, that's that's what I was gonna say. When it starts swimming around, it started creeping me out. Yeah. No, no. When it's in there, it's not that bad. Like uh, I don't know how to fucking. I was trying to get it out of there because you're supposed to go inside the ship to raise it. Right. Yeah. I uh. I don't uh completely remember how I got it. I mean, I know how you get it out of there, but I don't really remember my thoughts on it because it was so long ago. I do remember, though, my dad, uh, back when he was so interested in video games, would watch me play this, and this level was just blowing his fucking mind. Like, for me, it was like, oh, it's a magical video game, and look, it's just so awesome, this is my first time, but my dad was playing video games, you know, like on the Atari and shit many years ago. Dude, good job. good job hanging on to that shell. I've never done that before. I didn't Done. know you could do that in this game. Get a shell? No, like use it to swim really far or really fast. Are you putting me on? What do you? No, not at all. I really didn't know. Actually, I didn't even know. I don't even remember that that thing having a shell in it. Oh damn, dude. Ah well. Because I was just about to make a comment how these these things always seem to ha be more important than they than they are. Like they always seem to have something so much better because you have to like uh, sneak in to grab it before it hurts you. And then yeah. you know, it just ended up unlocking something that I've, I've never seen before. You can oh, do well, that in the cool. new. You can do that in the new uh, Super Mario Galaxy games with turtle shells. I had no idea yeah. in this game that you. Huh. Can use like what the hell? I, I just I guess I just never really explored there. Right? Okay, he's out all of a sudden. Yeah, dude, that thing's yeah. fucking huge. Yeah, when you're like six, it's like Jesus Christ. That's that, that's freaking me out. And plus, it was also new for everyone. And yeah, that, and that's this is, you know you're you're a kid and you're exploring in like 3D space. That thing, that kind of stuff would have been kind of you maybe scared me in a movie. And you're playing a video game and you get so into right. it as a kid. So big. <laughs> You're telling me. Ooh, la, la. All right, time to get in. Time to raise the roof of this ship. Just swim really fast. Okay. Swim sorry. really fast to the top. Oh yeah, you have to do this first. Yeah, this. Actually, uh, I think you can. Uh, you can swim to the top, or can you not? I don't know. No, you have to. It doesn't. The star is not there until you do this. Yeah, dude, this was badass to me uh, as a kid. You're going underwater and exploring a sunken ship. Yeah. Yeah. Where are the skeleton pirates, though? That should have been there. It's just such an interesting uh, way that they organize this game, where there's uh, so many secrets that you're, like, forced to get. It makes the uh, levels really dynamic in, in the way that you can just... Uh, you explore them, but then there, there's just... It's not just like everything is not there. You have to go find it all. Like half the level can be something that you have to discover. Not not you, like uh, oh it, well it's a big level but everything's all there. No, sometimes half the level is is hidden somewhere and you don't even ever necessarily have to find it. You might have to like come back later too and backtrack like when you get the different caps unlocked and stuff. And I thought that was cool as a kid. Like, I would see that floating green block at the beginning of the level. I'm like, what is that? You know, and then when I finally unlock it, like, oh, I can come back to this level now. But yeah. it was just a little bit of backtracking for just a, a 
for just like one star, not what like Banjo Tooie and Donkey Kong 64 did, where there's there so much backtracking and revisiting levels, it was painful. Did you ever play either of those? I played uh, Banjo Kazooie. No, I'm, I'm talking about Banjo Tooie and uh, Donkey Kong 64. Banjo Kazooie was completely manageable. Uh, I, I didn't play uh, Donkey Kong 64 or Banjo Tooie. And then that's, I, I think I might have played Banjo Tooie at, at the friend's house that I played Banjo Kazooie at. No, anyway, there's just a lot of backtracking and interconnectivity in those games, and that's, that's not necessary. Yeah, sounds. I don't like that in games. Me either. Can the eel come out and play? What, what is this one? Where you have to get the uh, star off the eel's asshole. Oh, right. Ugh, his tail. <laughs> no, his asshole. And then the fucking ship is actually at the top. That's pretty cool. Wait, no? Yeah, it's the... just a... Uh... Oh, wait, no, never mind. Yeah, you need the uh, Metal Mario for that. Actually, you don't. You really <laughs> don't, though. You, you can... Yeah, you... Yeah, I know. I, I don't think I've ever done it, though. Speedrunners do it. I hope I don't get uh, chomped on by this. Oh, ge oh, jeez. Damn, dude, oh. swim. Oh. <laughs> Good job. Bowser, don't taunt me. <laughs> <laughs> you suck. <laughs> you got owned, Mario. That doesn't sound anything like Bowser. Well, I'll do the Bowser voice from the Super Mario cartoon. It's me, Bowser. <laughs> Mashed potatoes. Uh. Cut! <laughs> Stunt Gecko. I want to say something about the music really fast uh, before I forget. I do think the reason people love this music so much, because um, I'm sure people that didn't play Mario 64 as a kid are just like, I don't see what's so great about this music. And I've had conversations with people that didn't play it as a kid. They're like, why is everyone, you know, so gay for this music? And it's just, it's such a nostalgia driven thing. Like yeah. you had you had to have played this as a little kid. This was like your first real water level on a 3D platformer, and it honestly it's good music. But it, what it really reminds you of is the first time you came to this level and like childhood wonder. Yeah, and yeah. It, it it has such it fits so well with the feel of this level. It really does. Uh, I, think I don't that's kind of a I don't know. I've been really uh, interested in how composers sort of can capture the theme of things uh, so well just through notes like I, I do they just keep playing different notes and, and then see how it feels or do they actually uh, is there some kind of method to the madness well being a musician myself uh, it's normally for, for me and for like uh, people I've known that play instruments which is most of the people I've known you sit down and you, when you're in a specific mood, you write something to try and capture how you're feeling. And uh, sometimes you can really well. But, you know, it really just depends on the situation and the, the composer, the musician yeah. himself. I guess you get good at it eventually, so that way someone, you know, commissions you, hey, write something that fits with a uh, water level in a childhood game, and, or in a child's game, and they're like, okay, and then they do it really well. I'm fairly certain that this was written, like, all the music in this game was by Koji Kondo, I'm, I'm fairly sure, which has done, like, so much Nintendo music, and that guy is just really good at capturing moods. Uh, he did Ocarina of Time's music as well. And That's cool. He did Super Mario World's music, and probably, uh, I think, he did write the original Super Mario's theme. Uh, I, I might be mistaken, but I'm, I'm fairly sure that I'm right about all this. And... That dude, uh, you probably like don't even know what he looks like or know his name, like anyone, you know. But this guy, I guarantee, if you like Nintendo games, you've heard this guy's music. And especially, everyone knows the Mario theme. Yeah. Who doesn't fucking know that unless you're living in like Africa or something? Do the Mario? Even people <laughs> do Mario visits Africa in order to uh, <laughs> kind of spread the Christmas cheer. <laughs> to teach uh, Christianity to all the African yeah. children. That's a way better joke. <laughs> yeah, I took your joke and made it better. That's, that's why I'm the, here. That's why I have him on the show. You know? Exactly. It's like Conan O'Brien and the, and the guy who's actually fucking him. Oh, yeah. Well, Conan O'Brien doesn't write 
any of that stuff. Like, if you like Conan O'Brien, you're laughing at a room full of writing. You're laughing at a writing staff. You're not laughing at Conan O'Brien. Good thing I'm not laughing at Conan O'Brien. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, everyone's like, you know, Conan O'Brien's so funny, but... Like, I don't know, he does deliver the... You're laughing at his I, delivery. I think he's but... in the room with them, I think, but I think, uh, like, 90% of the jokes aren't his. I don't think he's in the room with them anymore. I mean, maybe a long time ago, but I really don't think so anymore. He's too professional. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, David Letterman and Jay Leno aren't in the writing rooms. You know, they're like, give me my thing, and I'll snap and do my uh, act. That's my David Letterman. Yeah, but Conan O'Brien <laughs> is in either of those old men. Conan O'Brien's got to be old. That's true. He's probably around 40. He's, he's, that would make him younger than my parents. He, he's, he's been on the air since I was a child. Oh, like, I, I, think, I didn't know that at all. Yeah, he's been doing that show since, like, 1980-something, I think. Yeah, he's got Mario beat. <laughs> Do the Mario! Did you ever watch that show, Super Mario Brothers Super Show? I saw it one time as a kid. I, I turned on the television, and I was like, I must be dreaming. A show about Mario? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I thought that was so cool, and then I never saw it again, and I was like, damn it, this sucks. It was on TV, like, one time, and it was never on TV again, so my mom, uh, when I was really young, bought the VHS tapes of the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, and I would just, just watch them, like, over and over, and so, oh, yeah, Mario! Just, just, <laughs> I, lo I loved it so much. It was, I watched an episode uh, a few years ago on YouTube, and I was just like, man, this show really sucks. <laughs> like it, it, it not only is it just stupid, you know, but it's it's badly written. The, the plots are really contrived. I mean, what do you what do you want? It's a kids show, yeah. but it was still it. But kids shows can have really good writing, like SpongeBob and you know Robin's Modern Life and shit like that. <laughs> the Mario Super Show does not compare compare to Shakespeare. Well, I don't know if I go that far. All right, so I saw I saw the coin. It's there. it's up there. Yeah, yeah, you need the cannon. Oh, wait, no, you don't. <clears throat> I think you can climb it. Now, can I tell a funny story about uh, since it's your let's play? Um, <clears throat> yeah. This was a, uh, a few years ago. I think I was about 17. Uh, I was... Fuck up there. Yeah, what the hell? Get out you of the water, have... you moron. Jesus. Hey, there you go. I was playing this level while I was on the phone uh, with the next girlfriend and we were yelling and, and fighting and, uh, with each other. Well, she was getting really mad. I wasn't. I was just, uh, we were just arguing on the phone while I was playing this level and it was like six in the morning and I, I kept telling her things like she would get really mad at me and be like, well, you're just a, a, a boring douchebag who's afraid of commitment or some shit like that. And like, I was like, just a bob -omb. yeah, <laughs> but I, I kept saying shit like, don't, don't bother me with your inferior intellect and shit like that while just focusing on Mario. <laughs> and and then she would go off on these long tangents and I'd just be like, oh, damn it, because I fell down or something and she'd realize I wasn't even listening and she was getting really pissed off and I would just start laughing. And uh, I don't really remember how it all ended, but that's just something I think of every time I play this level now. And I, I really liked playing this level when it was like uh, it was like twilight. It was just about to be a sunrise, but it was still kind of dark. And I was playing this level, listening to the music. It was it was really a nice atmosphere. Yeah. Story time with Wes. Hey, at least it wasn't about getting stoned. Well, speaking of which, blast to the weed <laughs> pillar. Blast to the stoned pillar. I didn't want to make the joke, and then you made the joke. <laughs> this is not I why I have you on the Let's Play. Oh, sorry. What am I doing? What? This is not where I'm supposed to go. Come yeah, on, what are get you it doing? together. I, just, I thought you knew what you were doing. Like I didn't even really notice that you ran right past the cannon. <laughs> this level is just so entrancing. I'm, I'm caught in its uh, whimsical dance. It really sucks I can't hear the music. It, it's really not the same without the music. Well, don't tell them you can't hear it. I mean, I really like the music. Although, I'm not the biggest fan of the, like, techno kind of beat it does when you're on land. Fuck! Oh, yeah, this... I remember looking at that platform uh, when I first got to the level, like, how the hell do you get over there? And at least you don't have to start the level over if you miss. Yeah. Like, just get shoots you when you fucking fall into an abyss. Yeah, that's fucking annoying. Unless you had safe states. Uh? 
No, uh, Mario needs to work on his breaststroke. <laughs> I need to work on my breaststroke. Boom, baby! Oh, shit. Oh, man, I really wish you had fallen. <laughs> You know, what, what was the deal with there not being as many uh, blocks to break? You know, because that was a huge deal in all the Marios before, and then now it's just like, a, in this game, it just happens every once in a while. I kind of yeah. was, was a little bothered by that as a kid. But I, I like the way that you, it feels when you break blocks in this game, especially when they're giving you stuff like the, the power-ups. It feels way better than breaking a block in a, another game. Can't do this I just, one yet. Or can't I just really let's, like let's breaking... Let's give it a shot. Hey, give it a shot, but you're gonna... You will fail. <laughs> you will fail for... Okay. Damn. I don't know, Joker. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you will die. I was doing Come that to my friend, and he doesn't even know about YouTube poops, and it was making me laugh. Really? Was it just like, you've lost your mind? I guess he just... Well, because we do stupid jokes. Like, we just do jokes that are completely asinine just to try and get the other person to laugh at it. Um, That's really weird and stupid. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> JK. Hey, what's going on? And uh, I was just like, I was just like, bring me a die, or you will die for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is some guy, and I was like, he will die for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, like, me and my friend uh, Joseph in high school would just do all kinds of different variations while sitting in class and everyone hated us. It was just, dinner, or else you will make die for dinner. In the morning, I will die, and then I will make dinner. Okay, that's enough of that being recorded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you kind of got lost in it. Oh! I told you before, right, that we would, like, me and my friends got so used to just saying dinner all the time that we started having competitions of who could go the longest without saying it. <laughs> because, and I, I had this one friend that he was like, okay, okay, I, I want to be a part of it. And we were like, all right, because me and Joseph would have gone, like, two days or something. Our our friend Lance wanted to, to try and not uh, do it, too, just to be part of it, I guess. And within five seconds every time, he'd just be like, dinner. Like, within, within five minutes, I mean, not five seconds, he'd be like, oh, okay, and then there would just be silence for a little bit, he'd be like, dinner, and then we had to keep restarting it for him, and he just was like, you know what, I'm out, because I can't fucking, I can't resist saying dinner. <laughs> I think I'm gonna die for dinner. <laughs> or else you will I have to drown for dinner. <laughs> Bro, Tom, lamp oil. Bro, your nose, you fucking Italian bastard. Ooh. Don't talk shit about the Italians. <laughs> it is pretty cool how there's like an animation of Mario choking <laughs> yeah, <dude>. underwater. <laughs> That's kind of pretty dark.